Okay. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's uh, good to see all y'all, see all of y'all this Thursday. Um, we're going to be covering chapter 23, which uh -huh. is our uh, read it. It dawned on me it's the most human chapter in the whole book. Oh, okay. And um, I'll cover why after uh, we uh, open the uh, Sunday school lesson with prayer. Uh, Sister Tara, will you lead us in prayer? Uh, yes, I can lead in prayer. Everybody by ahead. But we thank you for this day. Thank you for this many blessings. So we thank you for all that you have done. But we're asking right now that you bless the ones who are battling with COVID right now and the ones who are dealing with bereavement right now. We ask that you bless the teachers and the teachers in this prayer, so God. But give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So title of this, you know, The Death of Sarah. Um, it's the title of this, is essentially the title of this chapter, The, the Death of Sarah. Um, I said that it's the most human chapter in the book because there, there, there are no miracles involved here, no prophecies involved here, no, conf, no um, you know, no battle with the people in the land, none of these things. It's, 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 a, it's a small snippet of why, why we're here in the first place. And, you know, the way that, you know, just the way that the chapter even starts off you know, um, so basically, the some of the summary in the uh, in this lesson. So they estimate this was around 1860 BC or 3,800 years ago. That's a long time ago. Okay, you're talking, you know, by usual chronology close to 500 years before the beginning of the Egyptian empire. So at this time, no pyramids had been built. And so this was a very, very, very long time ago. And um, well, take it back, my math is bad. The, the, the pyramids were just really beginning to be built. At this, at this point. So this was a very long time ago and the entire chapter just deals with Abraham's loss of Sarah. And the chapter starts off with first verse and he says, and, and Sarah was 127 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kirth Jeth Harba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and weep for her. Sarah is the only woman in the Bible whose age at the time of her death is recorded. She's the only one. No. Her story, her life story, when you look at it, wife of Abraham, mother of the promised seed, you know, she believed along with Abraham. You know, it took the faith of both to bring about the promised seed. And I was reading a commentary and, and there was another remarkable fact I'd never thought about this. But Sarah is also 
the gold standard for a godly woman. You would think since Mary was the mother of Jesus, she would be, but no, the Bible says, look at Sarah. Sarah was the example of a godly woman. You get, uh, you get this example in Isaiah 51, one through two, and you get it in 1 Peter 3, three through six. So if you wanna, in a sense, if you wanna get an idea of how God saw Sarah, that gives you an idea. The only woman to, whose death, age at, at, at her death was recorded, and she's the example. So at this point, she's gone, and she lived 36, 37 years after the birth of Isaac. And now, you know, she's gone. And, and, and the reason this is what this is what strikes me with the humanness of this of this chapter, because this this is the curse. This is um, this is where's my stuff at? How? Can y'all still see me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, this is the curse. This is the punishment all the way back. We've been in Genesis, right? This is the fulfillment of the curse. See, this death is the great equalizer right now. It's the great equalizer. Whether you're rich or poor, young or old, doesn't matter what ethnic group you're a member of. If you're on this side of translation, given enough time, this is where you're headed. The only difference is where you head that way as those as one who has no hope. But we're all headed that way. And you know, so she sojourned over 60 years with Abraham. And it said in verse, uh, and it said, and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And the Hebrew here, especially on weep, the literal meaning is eyes in the palms. So basically you're wiping tears from your eyes. You're, you're burying your face in your hands, right? In sorrow. All of us can picture that. You know, all of us understand that. All of us understand that loss. You know, it's, it's just, you know, as I read this and you, you you think, you know, all of us that have been here for whatever reason have been here. Um, I like, um, I was reading a commentary uh, a little bit from what James Boyce and this is what he said. He said to weep for a loved one is to show that we have been close, that the loss is keenly felt and that death is an enemy and that sin has brought this sad punishment upon the human race. Because Adam's sin opened the door and brought death to us. And our sin validates the curse. I think Dr. Because, did you have a question or? Uh, yes, but I didn't want to cut you, but two questions. No, go ahead. Uh, one, is uh, when Sarah is used as the model woman or wife by God. You gave us the scriptures, but can you give us a little information on why? Uh, because she did have some sins in her, in, in a few sins. 
And then second, can you give me the name of the commentary that you just said, James something, something? Uh, it was, a, uh, I believe it's David Guzik. Okay. I got it, I got it, it's um, David Guzik, G-U-Z-I-K. Okay. Yeah, and um, why? Because notice, Abraham is the father of the faithful. Sarah is his wife. They bore the promised seed. But remember, they weren't born saved. They were called out. Abraham was called out, come out, come out. Come out of the land you were born in, come into a land I will show you. Right? So they're types. So it you're not going to find a model that's not flawed. It can't happen. Where is it going to be? You can't even go back to Eve. Right? Right. So it's not, I don't have a problem with the fact that she had issues because they are just like us, right? Right. You got to quit. We, we tend to think of them as superhuman. No, they were just human. And they overcame the same way we have to overcome. She had faith. He had faith, they bore Isaac. They had faith, they soldiered in a land that wasn't theirs. So that's as it should be because otherwise we're gonna be all men most miserable, okay? Christ, the reason now Christ and even Jesus had to suffer the same things we did and overcome in the flesh so that we could say, okay, I did it in the same flesh that you have. So I'm gonna give you the same power I use so you can do it too. So I don't have a problem with the, the fact that she had flaws. I would expect that because everyone we're looking at in the Bible, okay, that what name Jesus had them. Uh, any other questions? No, that was excellent. Thank you. So then finally, in verse three, and Abraham, Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake. So again, death, we have to say goodbye and then we have to move on, okay? As hard as it is, we have to move on, okay? It, um, that's a part, that's, it's a part of life and it's a part of having faith. The Lord helps us move on. And so, in verse four, he says, I'm a stranger and sojourner with you. Give me possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Now, of course, in the natural, of course, they were. This, they were strangers in a strange land, right? Canaan was not their home. These were not their people. So they didn't own anything there. Um, and so, but he was also, of course, we realized, we realized that Abraham was also speaking with a spiritual eye. I am a, I am a stranger and sojourner with you. In other words, this land is not my home because I'm walking toward a city that has foundations, okay? But while I'm in this land that's not my home, there are things that still have to be done while we're here. Same thing. This land is not our home. This world, this arrangement is not our home. 
we're looking for that same city with foundations. But while we're here in, in, this, in these bodies, in this flesh, in this world, in this arrangement, there's still things that have to be done. And you know what? And sometimes it, it comes from the world. Right. Okay. Uh, we're not, we're, we're in the world. We're just not supposed to be of the world. And so, and again, um, as, as it says here in, in some of these in scripture references, Moses knew it and David knew it. See, when you walk by faith, you understand that, that the, the world is not your home. You're looking you're looking to the real home. You're looking to the reality. You're, you know, this this world is a this arrangement is a vapor. It's a flash. It's it's a it's a marred reflection of what God intended. So um, David I somewhere said, "When I wake, I will awake with your likeness." I'll be free of this marred existence, you know, it, and it is a marred existence. But he, but he comes to them and I need, I need a place to bury her. Now, he had been here before, um, he built an altar to God in this general area. So he was here. He, he, he knew he wanted it. And so he was willing to buy it. And the children of help answered Abraham saying, look, you hear my Lord, you doubt a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchers, bear thy dead. None of us shall withhold thee his sepulcher that, that thou mayest bear thy dead. So they basically said, look, Abraham, you're a princely man. We know you. We know your character. We know your deeds. Ask of us and you'll get it. Okay. And we know that sometimes that, that, that if you're those of good character, the Lord can grant them favor, even from the world. It's not like the, it's not like you that you can't that you don't have that they're not people that are not saved. They don't see your character. They don't they don't respect people of good character. They you know they do. And Abraham had you know shown forth the righteousness of God, and he had probably quite a few friends there in that area. And so it wasn't a problem. And, and like every human being understands that loss. So, so basically said, they said it won't be a problem. And he says, and Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of health. And he communed with them saying, if it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat me for Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it is worth, he shall give me a possession and a burying place among you. So <clears throat> Abraham, more than likely, you know, he had already picked this cave out even before now um, and saw that it was at the end of, of, of the edge of his land, okay? So it would be a small piece of his land. Um, and so he said, look, whatever it's worth, I'll pay it. And while he was speaking, Ephraim dwelt among the children of hell. Ephraim the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of hell, even of all that went in at the gate, saying, Nay, my Lord, hear me. The field I give thee, and the cave that is in therein I give thee, in the presence of the sons of my people give I it, I it thee. Bury thy dead. Now the Hittite, Heth, Heth was a Hittite. 
right? One of the ites that that uh, several hundred years later that the Israelites were to push out of the land, okay? The Hittites were a really powerful nation, city-state. They fought the Egyptians tooth and nail, okay? The day and the Egyptians were always pushing against each other. And they were pretty powerful because they were pretty much able to battle the Egyptians to a standstill. So they were, uh, uh, they were going, they were a powerful people. So Abraham dwelt among a strong people. And so, and now if you notice how the, the way they, the bargaining, right? Now, it didn't mean that he would literally give it to him. It was a way of bargaining, and you still see that today, okay? It's basically a bargaining point, right? And then the way it worked is a price is offered as a starting point for the bargaining, okay? And so it, you, you, you would, gifted to the person knowing that expecting the person to say no i want to pay for it okay and then the bargaining would begin back and forth and so the thing is is that and this is a important point and i liked it in one of the notes even sometimes if a person is willing to give you something for free, the question should be is, should you take it for free? Okay, there's a sense of fairness. Okay. Um, if you're, if we shouldn't always be trying to get over and get a free lunch, right? Um, and I like that in, in the notes um, and in some of the commentaries, you should, if you can afford to pay for something, stop trying to get it for free. It's not right, okay? Stop always trying to get, get a free lunch. And Put something where and yes, so sorry. Uh oh, I see. I 11. I popped some of my stuff down in and covered up my verses. I didn't realize that. Hold on for a second. Okay. I got 11, 12. I did. I blitzed them out of existence. So basically the bargaining went and then finally Ephraim answered Abraham saying unto him, my Lord, hearken unto me, hear me. The land is 400 shekels of silver. What is that between me and thee? Bury thou for their dead. So he basically said it's, it's appraised at 400 shekels. Okay. What is that between me and thee? And so Abraham said, okay, that's what I'm going to pay then, okay? Um, in the same sense as we carry insurance so that we can put away our dead, okay? You, it's true. It's the last thing we can do for them. And so in a sense, money's not an object, right? You know, you don't, the truth is we carry that so that we don't have to give our loved ones a pauper's funeral, right? So that's 
kind of what was going on here. Abram said, if that's what the land is worth, she's worth it. And he didn't try to bargain it down. Um, it, it, he basically said, she's worth it. She's worth every penny of it. And so it says, Abraham hearkened unto Ephraim and weighed to Ephraim the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of hell, 400 shekels, shekels of silver, current money. Now, again, even though it uses the word shekel here, there were no coins yet at that time. What you did was you had a weight of silver, silver dust, silver pow powder, silver um, nuggets. And so you had a balance and you would weigh out the appropriate weight and that's how, that's how uh, mon monetary transactions was done. There was no paper money at this time. Um, and there were no coins yet. That wouldn't come, uh, I don't know, maybe for another thousand years or so where you had coins. So that's what they did. They, they, they had nuggets and dust and powder and um, earrings and rings and things like that. And they would weigh out uh, the amount. So in the same sense where gold right now is probably about $1,500 an ounce. So if you had an ounce of pure gold, you knew you had $1,500. So that's how, that's kind of how it worked. So, and after this, Abraham buried his wife, Sarah, in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, the same as in Hebron, and the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession for a burying place. He also, and to prove it, he also got title deed to the land. Okay, so, so he... So in this case, something would be written out, sealed in a, uh, what am I looking for? A pottery container of some type with wax. And that's where the title deed would be. If you remember what the Lord told Abraham, uh, not Abraham, uh, Jeremiah, as an act of faith, he told him to get the title deed of a, piece of land in Jerusalem, sealed it because even though they were going to go into exile for 70 years, they were going to come back. So you, you will need the title deed to the land. And that's, kind of, that's what would happen. That's what was happening here. You, you would have a written title deed out in the presence of the elders of the city and then it would be signed, noted in the records, and then you would seal the title deal deed up to protect it uh, from the elements. Uh, any questions? And as a, if you think about it, in all the time that uh, Abraham sojourned in the land, and after him, of course, you had Isaac, and after him, of course, you had Jacob, right? This is the only piece in Canaan that he actually had a title deed to. Now, he had been prom he's promised the whole land, right? But this is the only piece he actually had a title deed to. And so, you know, he, he buys it. He buys it in faith, knowing that his descendants were going to be able to come back and have land. 
uh, not just the, you know, not just the burial cave, but the, you know, the entire land of Canaan. But you get, you know, so I like one of the questions here. It said, who showed the greatest love in this land transaction? Abraham or Ephraim? So what do you think? What was the question? Who has the greatest what? Who showed the greatest love? Abraham or Ephraim? Ephraim. Abraham. Abraham? Right. Why? Because Abraham always tried to, he followed what God told him whenever he was given a, a um, task to do, even though he, you know, he did make mistakes like we all do. Um, he, he tried, you know, he, he tried not to go against Sarah, not to go against God for what Sarah wanted to do until God gave him permission to go to do those things. But I think he showed the most love because he was always concerned with others before he was concerned for himself. And he, 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 he loved God and he always wanted to do what was best. And, you know, for God, for the people through his being obedient to God, that's my kind. Wrong? Right. <laughs> Anyone else? I, I don't know if I could come to a conclusion of which showed the greater, the greater love. Mm -hmm. Lee was dependent upon the perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, Ephraim represented the world or didn't have a relationship with the Lord. However, he saw the God in Abraham. And so that took much faith. I think mm -hmm. Abraham also showed much love because he never bought any property before. He didn't know it need any in his mind or his spirituality because he knew that he was sojourning. And it, but however, he knew that while he and his descendants waited on the Lord, he he it showed that he kind of abide by the law of the land that mm -hmm. of what was required at that particular time. Mm -hmm. He's now here. I know I'm going to heaven, but in the meantime, I need to do the things that I need to do to show, even to show the world the God in me, because I'm preparing for the burial place of my seed. And what if he just died on, thought about himself, went on uh, uh, to heaven? I guess he could have buried uh, Sarah the way others did at that particular particular time. But so I, to me, I guess I was I was torn between the two answers because I saw the love in both depending upon the perspective of view. Yeah, yeah. It it um it like I said, it, it's always in in when you're um, during times like this, during the, during the death of someone. You know, it's easy to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, funeral homes are famous for it. Yes. In fact, to me, the um, the two biggest uh, ripoff profit industries are uh, funeral, the funeral industry, uh, baby formula. And uh, healthcare, healthcare in general. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, in the prison system, absolutely, because 
it, because you have people over, you know, in vulnerable situations, right? And it's easy to take advantage of them. And here, Ephraim didn't. He said, look, the land's worth 400 shekels. Okay, that's what it's worth. If, if, if you know, I, I think if, if Abraham had suggested less, I think Ephraim would have taken less. But again, the way it went at that time, the bargaining is you you he, he saw, he understood. Abraham was willing to pay whatever. And plus, Abraham could afford it. You know, Abraham said, no, I don't have to pay less and I don't want to pay less. If that's the price, that's the price. So I think that, I, I think this, it, I think it shows A, the respect that Abraham had among them uh, B, I think it also shows that um, Abraham also knew because his dealings with them had always been upright and, and though in their dealings with him had pretty much been upright. So he knew when he went and made the request because when he made the request, he didn't, there was no hesitation. He said, you know, he went to them, uh, you know, and, and basically said, you know, he showed humility, he said, look, I know I'm a stranger here. You don't owe me anything. So I'm asking this of you. And they basically said, Abraham, look, you're a great man. We've seen you. We've seen your works. You... You know, they, they basically said, we in this situation, we're going to treat you as one of our own. We, you know, because of, you know, the way you've carried yourself, your dealings, uh, your life shows. So I, I think that, like I said, I like this chapter. I, you know, we, I hadn't, I, I don't think I'd ever really read it, you know, and maybe it's timing is everything, right? Because we're, you know, right now we're in a time of just, it just seems like things are unraveling everywhere, right? A lot of suffering, a lot of sickness, a lot of, you know, a lot of death. So, you know, I, I took more, I guess I took more time with this one than I normally would have. Um, usually I think, to be honest, I would have read it really quickly and kind of just glossed right over it. Um, she, you know, she died, he bought the cave on the chapter 24, right? But I think I like the. I realized I like the chapter because it is. It's it. It shows the importance of upright dealings with the world. You don't fall into the trap of thinking, and I think it was somewhere else in the notes that thinking that. you that you only have to you, you, you only have to treat people with respect and uprightness if they're saved and if they're unsaved it really don't matter in a sense you understand what i'm getting at yes and uh you know you you you, you it, in their dealings, you know, you, you can't run around and say what well, god has for me it is for me and run rough shot of was unsay. And Abraham's dealings were such with them that when he needed something, the door was open. Okay, you know, yes, the Lord can kick open a door, even if those around you don't want to open it. But most of the time, he's look, well, not most of the time, all the time, He's looking for us to live in such a way that the door is already open. Even the door was, is open before you make the request. 
And that's usually the way the Lord works. We sing, you say, you know, why are we trying to figure out he's already worked it out? The truth is the door is already open. You just didn't need it. You weren't looking for it. And Abraham's dealings were such and his manner was such that when he needed it, he went and asked and the door was already open. There was no fight here. And that's, I, I, that's I, I think, um, you know, no favor isn't fair, but don't expect favor if you're not willing to be fair. Don't be shocked if you're acting like a jerk, okay? And then when you need something, you're going to get some of that jerk back because the door is going to be closed and then the Lord might have to force, might have to force it open for you, okay? Uh, in spite of, he might have to open the door in spite of you, okay? Not because of you, but in spite of you. And that's what you don't want here. Abraham the door was open because of and not in spite of. And I do, I like, and like I said, I like it. It's a, it's a very simple chapter. It's a very short chapter, but there's a lot there when you really think about it. Uh, any other questions? I, I don't have a question, but I do have a comment mm -hmm. uh, something I can share. And I remember Many years ago, maybe, I don't know, it could have been 20 years ago, and we had gone, my sisters and my mother and all of us had gone to a convention in Florida. And after that, we went to, because we're so close that we went on one of those cruises. And so we stopped and we were there in the Bahamas. And everybody was negotiating, negotiating. And so my sister, Sister Williams was there. And she she helped us understand that you don't 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 negotiate with the people like that. Look at where they live. They're looking living in huts. They're living with those who are out there. They are spending their time making things with their hands. So whatever they are asking, whatever price that is, pay it because it's a lot less than what you're going to be paying anyway. And then this these are those persons livelihood this is how they make a living so so I'm, i've always kept that in my mind all through the years because sometimes when we go even when we go to to uh get things fixed or uh, and and to different places and people I always keep in mind these are people who have uh employees on their payroll they have to pay for those people so they have set those prices, but it's so easy sometimes for us to say, this is God showing us favor. This is our blessing or whatever. And some things are blessing, some things are mm -hmm. favor. But mm -hmm. if the price is set mm -hmm. and you know what you're kind of dealing with and where you are, why would you be doing, uh, why would you do this? So is this, and I always ask myself the question, is this a form of legalized stealing? Are we in our mind make uh, right. case and then right. uh and then another one is uh when i was used to work with a whole lot of money with with a, uh at the one of the companies that i worked with so we would probably take in hundreds of thousands of dollars a night there were cashiers there who way back then at that time were on hourly wages so sometimes we were very very so count the money count it twice because if you uh come up short then we can't keep you Mm -hmm. So then I always thought that in the back of my mind, and this I know almost 40 years ago, 30 or 40 years ago. And so that always made me very conscious of if I'm going to the bank, if I'm going to the store, if I'm going anywhere, if a cashier is counting a miscount, or even if they forget to ring something up, you tell them about that mm -hmm. because they may get fired or they have mm -hmm. to pay it back or whatever. And sometimes mm -hmm. we're so easy to say, that was my blessing. No, it was not your blessing because it didn't belong to you uh, anyway. So just like you were reading this chapter, it was so uh, relevant and so much information that we deal with in our walk with the Lord. Because sometimes we focus on, well, I'm not doing the so-called big sins, but it's these little sins that, that will get 
the saints have a whole lot of trouble if we're not mindful and conscious of this. And as teachers, we have to teach and others, not just teachers, but we have to teach even the younger people and be very careful about what we say because sometimes we think it may be okay. You go in the store, you don't have no money and you up the counter and then, well, you know, you can't, sometimes that's okay, but sometimes you may be sending out the wrong message mm -hmm. when, when we say things like that. And sometimes it's okay, but just being very careful and mindful of everything we're doing because the world watches us. Mm -hmm. They watch what we do and how we do. And then it's so easy to say, those old apostolic folk over there. Yeah. 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 I um, On that, I remember... And like I said, I don't do it as much anymore, but I used to fix people's computers on the side. And um, then I used to tell them, look, the difference is, is this. I said, uh, I'm not relying on this to buy life insurance, health insurance. I'm not relying on this to put food on the table. So I don't have to charge you as much. Understand when you go to a small business, they are. Okay. Okay. They, uh, the, this is how they do all those things. Okay. I said, that's, that's the reason I can charge less. That's the way I, that's the reason why sometimes I can say, uh, I'm not going to charge you anything. Okay. That's my perspective is different. This is, this is, it's not lights on lights off for me. I said, but when you go to a small business or someone in a business, it is for them. Okay. That's why they're, they're paying for a lot out of that. So um, you have, you're right. You do have to keep that in mind that, uh, you know, what's going on and not always trying to, you know, get over, um, you know, and if you don't, you know, if you, because trust me, after a while, people sense when you're just trying to get over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and yes, I ain't, I, I, you know, and we've all run across saints like that. <sighs> like, you don't even want to go anywhere with them, right? It's because they're always trying to. <sighs> get around it you know get up and, and get over and it's 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 a problem and people notice it people aren't stupid and yes i think it's in those day-to-day -day dealings it's the day to, see the favor comes if you upright the the real favor is that in your day-to-day -day dealings are favorable then the favor is there when you really need it, okay? When you really need it, when you don't expect it, okay? When not only when, you, when you're not even looking for it, then it'll, then it'll be there. Whereas, no, I, you know, I, I, I agree. I think, I think sometimes we, I, I'm pretty certain in most of this, in a lot of cases, a lot of people, I think have a odd view of the whole favor thing. Favor doesn't mean you're always getting around. Sometimes it's the time. Yes, pay what okay. you're asked. Can I make a, second, yeah. a comment? I just want to comment on something. Mm -hmm. um, I know sometimes that can also mess up your own blessing mm -hmm. um, when you do things like that. Um, I know um, back here, it's been a little bit about a month ago, I was in Walmart and you know how like they check your receipts when you walk mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And um, this particular time, the young man, the gentleman didn't check my receipt and I forgot to pay for my water that was underneath my buggy. Mm -hmm. So I got all the way out to the car and not thinking that I didn't pay for this water because I forgot to put it up and forgot to let the cashier know. Mm -hmm. But when I got to the car, I realized, I said, oh my goodness, I didn't pay for the water. Didn't even realize I remembered that I had it because I bought it, <laughs> put it in the cart. 
at the very beginning when I started shopping. So I went back in, and the man, he was just looking at me. He knew then. He said, mm, I didn't check her receipt. <laughs> but I went ahead, and I went back and paid for it. And, you know, I could have. I, I thank mm-hmm. the Lord that he didn't put it on my heart to say, oh, it was their bad luck. Mm-hmm. I knew that was that would have been stealing on me. I couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> no telling what all I couldn't do because of that water. And I said, I could not put that water in my car and leave there without paying for it. So, you know, sometimes it's a test to see where we are with ourselves. So I think um, as saints, we have to really think about the things and what we're doing at times. And a lot of times it's not. The favor will come, being in good health. You know, you can count that as a favor. Right. So I just wanted to make that comment. Share that. Any other comments? So this, but like I said, this um this lesson, like I said, I thought it like I said, it's something that be honest in years past, if I'd have been reading in Genesis, I'd have probably would have read through it pretty quickly. And um it's just I don't know, like I said, timing is everything. This time it 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 just it opened up more. Um, cause like I said, right now we're in pretty, pretty rough times. There's a lot of people around us that are experiencing this right now for all kinds of reasons. And, um, you know, you, um, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's, it, you know, and after, and, and, you know, this has gone on so long, all this stuff that, you know, with the pandemic has gone on, to be honest, the truth is sometimes, uh, you know, I can feel myself fraying at the edges. Um, you know, it, it, you just fatigued, you're, you're worn out. Um, and, you know, and everything else, and things and just because we're in the middle of the pandemic, you just got the nor the you know the everyday normal uh insanity of this world continuing and look like it's getting worse. Okay. You know, you know, you know, I was listening to the news just before this class, and it said that 98% of the West is in drought condition and 60% of the West is in extreme drought conditions. And, you know, it's just so much going on now. And um, you just, you know, when we pray, whatever the Lord brings and whoever, he brings to mind, call him out. Um, whatever he, you know, if he, you know, sometimes he'll bring something to your mind. Like, why, why are you, what is this? Uh, he wants you to pray for it. He wants you to pray for them. There's just so much going on. Um, it's overwhelming. Uh, that, you know, we, be more mindful of praying for, of course, each other, and then those we come into contact with. Um, people are caring a lot that we don't even know of. Um, are caring a whole, whole lot. Um, when you at, at work and um, at school and at church and everywhere, so you know, I I just thought this lesson it, it like I said I thought it was it just encapsulated you know the human condition that down here while we're so soldiering through while we're passing through here that you know it some things you just can't escape from 
And there's no, it's not like Monopoly where you got to get out of jail free card. You just, you just have to pass through things. So, um, May I make a comment, Brother Hill? Yes. I understand what you're saying. And you know, yeah, it's, it's, these are rough times. And, you know, uh, you look at the COVID and everything going on. But the thing about it is, you know, God is showing us that we can't put our trust in situation. You know, if you look at uh, situations and you will be overwhelmed. That's why the Bible tells us not to walk by sight, but walk by faith. You know, everything else looking around, you're looking at what's happening to ICE, looking at what happened to Afghanistan, all these things. You know, God is showing us that our security is in him. You know, time is going to go, time is going to be hard, but we got to put our trust in him and not to look at the situation because God is the only thing is security. You know, all these things that we we thought was security, was stable. Ain't none of this stuff stable, man. Mm -mm. You know, what's showing me right now is we got to stay on our knees, you know, you know, and, and we got to trust in God. You know, every day we get on our knees and trust in God because, you know, God, God said many affliction of rights, but yeah, he able to live us out of them all. He didn't say some. He said all. Oh. So <clears throat> we can look at situations. We can get discouraged, but we can't do that, man, because our hope's in God. And, and one thing about it, Bible said two immutable things that God cannot do. He cannot change and he cannot lie. The word said he'll take care of us. He'll lead us and guide us. And he, he'll do that. And so that's where we're at right now. We got to trust him and we got to pray and let God do his thing in our lives and pray for other people, pray for each other. That's where we're at right now. Amen. Amen. Are there any other comments? Well then, Brother Gary, yeah. Will you close us out in prayer? Okay. Is any special request? We go. Uh, just, just continue to pray for the children. In the past, we we know this virus is serious. We know it's out there. Uh, I don't know the the uh, the, the first child here in uh, at Greater Christ Temple Church. It may have been others. Was uh. A hunter merit. I mean, he's just a little child, and mm. so we we know that this virus is out there. It's attacking everybody, but in spite of that, we know that the Lord is a healer. Mm. And when I was going in the Bible class last night, Sister Merit was out in the parking lot, and so I asked her, you know, how 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 is the baby doing? How is he, how is he doing? She said, Dr. Cook, yes, he 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 was tested positive, which that came out the newsletter. But she said, I went by the house. And he was out in the yard uh, with the football. I mean, probably mm -hmm. out there by himself, whatever. So even though we're going through and and some of these illnesses will we'll come on the same so the children, but it was just so uplifting and you know, to, mm -hmm. to hear her say well, he was out in the yard doing the football. So we're going through a lot. And as we pray, we, we say uh, extra prayer, I mean, pray for everybody, but especially the little children, because although they are under attack by the devil, but you never think in terms of the children affected. However, just like a year ago, uh, there was no vaccine for the older people at this point, for those kids under 16, they're just at the mercy, I mean, uh, of this, this I'm at the mercy of the Lord, Lord never. But, but uh, the prayers will cover uh, them. And so uh, as we know the prayer, not just share and all that, I know I'm very wordy with stuff, but let's just say an extra prayer for especially uh, the children. Okay. As by his gracious God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for Brother Hill teaching this class. And we thank you for all other teachers. Thank you for Dr. Cook who leading class, leading the, the Sunday School Department. Thank you for her, her staff. And thank you for all whoever participate tonight, God. We come before you, Lord, realizing, God, Lord, we have a lot going on right now in this world, God, and come before you, Lord. We don't want to be overwhelmed with what we see with our eyes, God. We don't want to be overwhelmed, but Lord, we ask you, Lord, today that you would help us to, to know, Lord, the security is in you, God. And we pray for each and every one here today, God, that you would strengthen, Lord, uh, that you would give us the strength that we need, God, to overcome, Lord, every obstacle, every situation, God, that we'll pull close to you in these troublesome times, God. Don't let us faint for what we see with our eyes, God. Help us to trust in you, God, to pray and to pull close to you, God. 
because we realize we belong to you, God, and you want a closer relationship with you, and you're always going to be there for us, God. So we pray that you would show yourself to be strong today, that you would continue to help us, Lord, when we get weak, that you would help us do this, Lord, and we pray that you would help us to take your hand and you lead us in God. God. You take control of our situations. Take control of our family, God. Take control of our finances, God. Take control of our lives, God. We we want to get to a point where we surrender our whole life to you. Lord, not just live, sir, but to do it, Lord, because you want us to be committed to you, God. So we pray that you would, with your loving hands, God, we pray that for the little kids, God, and, yes. and honey, and all those, Lord, who have the COVID virus, who, who don't have the uh, the medicine for them right now, but we pray that you that you would send you. Yes. Thank you, muted brother. There we go. He preaching the heart of God. Is he preaching for you know uh, souls, Lord, and, and how you know he's trying to run to churches, God, and try to get his church going to new campus, Lord, on young lanes. We pray that you will bless him with the strength he need to lead us in God and give him a vision, God. We pray that you would strengthen him, Lord, and that you would give him the what he need, God, to go on. And we pray that you would bless us to that he would see it with our own eyes that we'll move into that young lane property. God. And we thank you, Lord. We know you will do it. And we know you protect his family, God, and we protect him and hold him up, God. And we thank you for all the ministers and on Orozco. We thank you for all the deacons and, and everybody. And we praise you, Lord, today that you would bless each and every one here today, bless their family, God. And, and we ask you, Lord, you would have your way, God. We thank you for this class and thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, pray, amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I'm glad brother here. Thank you. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Good job, brother here. Welcome. I will Enjoy see it. You on <laughs> Sunday. All right. Okay. Good night. All right. You take care. Have a good night.